So here we have an example of a lichenoid keratosis and this is a pretty common lesion that we see in routine skin pathology and this example was excised from the leg of a woman in her 50s and the clinical history was of a red um, and erythematous slightly scaly lesion that was excised and that's quite a common clinical scenario for lichenoid keratosis. And here we have a low power view of one of the pieces which is representative of what was seen in the other pieces as well. So on the low power examination what you can see is that we've got this plaque of irregularly acanthotic epidermis here. If you compare with the thickness of the epidermis at the edge of the skin specimen to what we have in the middle you can see there's clearly thickening of the epidermis with some overlying hyperkeratosis and some hypergranulosis as well. And underneath that, associated with it, is what looks on this power like a very brisk band of inflammation associated with it. So if we go a little closer, just to have a look, we can see, again, this very nice, irregular, sawtooth acanthosis of the epidermis with overlying hyperkeratosis, and this quite brisk and band-like lymphohistiocytic inflammatory infiltrate and it's associated with quite extensive evidence of interface activity. We have basal cell damage and this shower cluster of apoptotic keratinocytes here and in other areas this is associated with um, early separation of the epidermis from the underlying dermis so a little area of clefting and early blistering there which can be seen. And this is what we see really across the entire lesion, all in a very similar way. And this is very typical of the appearances of lichenoid keratosis. And really, it's a diagnosis of exclusion, really. The important thing being to rule out any other particular lesion that is associated with a lichenoid inflammatory reaction to it. And a variety of epidermal and also melanocytic lesions will often show a lichenoid inflammatory reaction to them, but we only really use the term lichenoid keratosis when there's no other obvious um, diagnosis to make and we just have um, an area of acanthotic and hyperkeratotic epidermis with an associated lichenoid inflammatory reaction to it. And the most important thing really not to miss when diagnosing these is really a, a melanocytic lesion and most importantly a melanoma with a brisk lichenoid inflammatory reaction to it. So it's very important when examining these to be very happy that there's no obvious melanocytic lesion hiding in amongst the inflammatory reaction. Sometimes this can be quite difficult to be absolutely sure and actually in this example um, you might wonder particularly where you've got nesting and groups of inflammatory cells here um, at the base of the epidermis you may question whether or not there could be uh, a melanocytic proliferation in here. And in these sorts of examples, I have quite a low threshold for performing immunohistochemistry for melanocytic markers, just to be sure that there's nothing lurking and hiding within all that inflammation. So here I have a melanase stain of the same section of skin. And this shows quite nicely uh, all we're seeing here is a relatively normal population of somewhat dendritic melanocytes along the basal epidermis, but nothing here to suggest we've got a melanocytic proliferation. There's no nesting of melanocytes, no pagetoid spread, nothing here to suggest that we're dealing with a lichenoid reaction to a melanocytic lesion. So I'm now very happy to diagnose this as a lichenoid keratosis.